Hey again everyone and welcome back to the channel for a new installment in our ongoing new figure showcase series. And for this series of videos, I take a quick look at a new addition to my 6 scale collection and just walk you through the figure, the accessories, and just give you my overall thoughts. I have to admit that I'm pretty excited for today's episode on multiple fronts. But before getting into that, we'll be taking a look at the in-art premium version Harry Potter figure in 6 scale format based on the character's appearance in the first movie in the series, The Sword stone. So I said I was excited and obviously the first reason is I'm a huge fan of the series having read the book some time ago and I still think the movies hold up remarkably well and while the first movie did have a more kid friendly tone it definitely paved the way for what to me remains one of the better adaptations of a book series to date and clearly one of the most well received with the series still being relevant today so much so that even my kids are enjoying discovering this world. Now. InArt isn't the first company to tackle the series, with Star Race previously releasing a slew of characters from the series, but some of those did leave a lot to be desired, so seeing a company step in to try and provide quality figures was very welcome. Obviously, since then, we've also had J&D's Cosion Works jump into the, the license, so it is a license that's gaining some traction. So that's great, and there are more figures being teased and coming up, so it is a great time if you're a six-scale collector and a fan of the Harry Potter series. Second reason that I'm excited is that this marks the first in-art release I'm getting my hands on, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they're delivering, especially given the hype around the company that seemed to be everywhere on YouTube even before in-art had released a thing. But I'm approaching this with an open mind, although for the price point on this, I am expecting to be blown away. So let's look at what InArt is giving you here, and as you can undoubtedly see, you're getting a ton of things. And as mentioned at the start, you do get some extras as this is the deluxe or premium version. So besides the figure and the rooted sculpt that comes in its own package, you get a few hands, some textbooks, the sorting hat, chocolate frogs, Hedwig and her cage, an alternate set of clothes to create a different look, as well as a number of additional things we'll look at more closely. But the one that immediately stands out is the diorama base that does require some assembly, but is meant to represent a portion of the Gryffindor common room. So really nice amount of accessories that all feel appropriate to the movie and the character. So let's jump into the accessories and we're going to start looking at things in further detail with the hands. Now the peg system for these is the more traditional one we've seen with pretty much every six scale company to date. So no magnets on these. You get a bunch of hands set in pre-posed gestures to hold the wand, the lamp, and some other accessories, as well as a series of gloved hands meant to hold the same. Now the normal hands look good with a great paint app, even at the nail where you can see a slight white line where the nail hits the skin. The gloved hands are probably more impressive with the sculpt capturing the texture of those cloth gloves, but honestly I would consider these pretty standard. They're great, but nothing that stands out beyond the norm. Next up you get some documents that should be familiar to any Harry Potter fan. So you get the letter he receives notifying him of his admission into Hogwarts. The paper is a very thin material and it's literally a print. But you can read some of the details and there is a nice weathering to the paper to give it an aged look. The back of the envelope does also include a simulated wax seal. And then you get the ticket for the Hogwarts Express. Again, all nice things to have, especially if you've watched the movie, but the end, just paper products. And I do wish the, chick the ticket had at the very least been printed on a sturdier paper. It's very thin, so it does feel a bit cheap. Although I guess they were going for a little bit more realism, but one of the things I think they could have done a little bit better. Next, you get the chocolate frogs, which are another key aspect of that first movie. So you get the distinctive pentagon-shaped box, as well as three versions of the frogs, and one of the famous witch or wizard cards that comes with the package. The frogs themselves are extremely tiny, but they have some really nice detail to them. And the package is also really well done, with the nice printing on the surface, as well as on the interior. The only thing I'm not crazy about is the card. Yes, it's extremely small, but when you look at the previous accessories and some of the books, this feels like an afterthought and just a glossy screen print of an image that's not altogether clear. You might say this is me being nitpicky, and, and I agree I am being, but at the price point, I think we should be. But overall, another nice add with the exception of that card. Next up, you get the Sorcerer's Stone, or two versions of it. You get the fully revealed version from the end of the movie that's done in a nice red plastic that does have some variations throughout and some good detail, recreating the look from the movie with some very distinctive elements near one end. And the second version is the fully wrapped in paper one with real string, which is a nice touch, and this is what gets taken by Hagrid from the vault at Gringotts. Next, you get a lamp, and this is the another kind of issue I had. So first of all, the lamp does have a light up feature. It is fully plastic except for the loop at the top, which is metal and where the figure can't hold it. 
Down the sides you get a nicely painted brass looking body with some opaque panels that have some star designs. And along the interior you can actually see a sculpted orange flame that's held in place by a pin. So very nicely done. My issue is there's supposed to be a light included and after prying the lamp apart, mine didn't include the light. Not something I was planning on making significant use of, but that's why you're not seeing the light feature in the review. I do have to reach out to 1.6kit to see if I can get one set my way, so that was a little bit disappointing. Next you get the sorting hat, and what's funny is every deluxe figure in this series, the upcoming Ron and Hermione are going to have this included. Not sure that it's totally necessary, but it's extremely well done with fabric tassels and a nice fabric lining that yes, you can use even with the rooted hair. The detail and sculpt work on the hat, also phenomenal with the furrowed brow and the pursed lips, just creating that sense of personality we saw from the movie. So even as a diorama piece, it would be pretty cool to display. Next you get the broom, and I know it's a lot of accessories, so thank you for bearing with me, but I, I do want to go through all of them. Now this isn't the fancy Nimbus 2000 that he gets prior to his first Quidditch match, this is the standard broom from his early flying lessons. It does come with a plastic handle that's wrapped with actual wood strands at the base to replicate a real broom. It looks great and the detailing on the handle looks good too. It's a very good replica. My only thought is, I thought Inart was going to be delving more into real material. Um, and the, the basically the stick for the broom is plastic so it doesn't take away from it but it would have been nice to get the handle made out of wood as well and next of course you get his wand pretty much the essential accessory for a wizard and it does come with the box from Ollivanders that is recreated in a cardboard material so I do appreciate that effort could have easily been plastic but instead Inart did recreate an actual box at a remarkably small scale so everything here works great now let's get into the books you get two textbooks one book that I think is a recreational reading and then the photo album Hagrid gives Harry at the end of the first movie which is exclusive to the deluxe set so look not the first time we've seen books and they look good covers are legible with one being a potions textbook the other a history of magic and the third titled flying with cannons again pretty sure it's a quidditch related book and of course that photo album that has a nice wood looking panelized cover even from the side the books look great um, now the Hermione figure does include a bookcase with her diorama, so you may be able to place those in that case for storage. Now, pardon the hands, I normally don't like to hold items in the videos, but I thought it key to at least look at the inside of all the books, because Inart did do a pretty good job here too. Starting with the photo album, the cover again has that nice panelized wood look with the emblazoned gold logo in the middle. When you open it up, you do see the exact replica of what we saw on screen, with the picture of baby Harry with his parents, and just like in the movie, these are lenticular prints that create the illusion of movement. And on the second page, you get the picture of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and then a series of blank pages. But it's really well detailed, and I kind of wish the chocolate card that we got with the frog had been done in a similar fashion. The Flying with Cannon book is completely bare in the interior with just plain pages. Not sure if that was an oversight, but it doesn't take away from the detail work on the cover. The next two books though are very interesting. So if you flip through the inside, you'll find text and writing in each page. This isn't anything new. Hot Toys has done this before, Damn Toys has done it, so we've seen books with writing. What I will give in our credit for is that I think they published an entire book that includes chapters. As you flip through, there's unique writing on all the pages, so I think that's pretty impressive, and I'm guessing they used one of the full-scale versions to recreate this. Not necessary at all, but I do have to give them credit for that. The second book, they did get a little lazy. Again, unique pages throughout, but I'm pretty sure upon review that it's just the same pages we're getting with both books. So while impressive, they did take an easy way out. I'm not going to fault them though, because it's still an impressive undertaking. Next up, you do get Hedwig, Harry's Owl, and I'm holding her because she's not exactly stable. Sculpt here is really impressive. At first, I thought it might be flopped, but it's all sculpted, and the main body is really textured well, where it looks like the actual feathers are sitting well. Face Sculpt 2 is very solid, particularly around the beak. The only item I have slight issues with are the eyes. These are just painted on, and while they look good, they're the one element that I feel kind of detracts from the overall realistic feel. And then at the bottom, you do have the chest elements, the tail and feet, essentially glued on. And you do see the joint lines, which aren't the best looking, although it's going to be a relatively hidden uh, feature once you pose up the um, pose, pose Hedwig up. So still really nicely done. Keeping in line with Hedwig, you get her cage that is a nice oval shape, and the bars are real metal, and that's impressive. I, I like the use of real material. There's also a footrest here for the owl that has some pegs to allow you to socket Hedwig in. The door to the cage also opens, and you do, do get a real metal chain that's used to hold the cage closed. It really is a nice accessory and a great way to display the owl. 
Closing in on the end now, you do get an added poncho and scarf to create the winter Hogwarts uniform look. Scarf isn't wired, just as an FYI, and I do think because it isn't, it does tend to drape a little bit more naturally because it is a lighter fabric. And the poncho itself is also a nice thin fabric that includes a single clasp at the neck, which does require some small tweezers to get the loop around the button. Scarf has the distinctive Gryffindor house colors and the poncho has the Gryffindor seal embroidered on the chest, so nicely done. So now let's get into the diorama. As mentioned earlier, it's a small segment of the Gryffindor common room that includes the very distinctive wall murals. There is also a forced perspective here, where you can see the stairs leading up to the dorm room with a nice castle window beyond that's pretty nicely done. Now this background is plastic, and there are components that you have to attach at the top to create the coping stone. And you do have alternate corner elements that would allow you to place headwork directly on them. The fit of these is a little snug, and does take a little work to get in place, but it is a nice option. And the entire back wall sits on this large display stand. Now, you can remove the center um, portion of the display to create the smaller magnetic stand, but you can also just leave it exposed to display the Gryffindor crest. Or you can add in the supplemental floor piece that creates the illusion of a wood floor. Although, again, material selection here, it's just plastic, which is a little disappointing when you consider that the Joker diorama and the Pennywise diorama did include real wood elements or real metal, so just a bit of a shame here. Although the Gryffindor common room wallpaper does have an almost denim feel to it, and it is an applique, so that's just something that is an added bonus that does stand out. You can flip the diorama, diorama around to show the exterior of the castle with a nice weather stone detail that also showcases the window. This was one of my issues here though, and that was that Inart showed the figure on the broom in a flight mode in front of this version of the stand, but they didn't include any stand to achieve that pose. By contrast, the Cosion Works Quidditch version, Harry, does include a flight stand, so at least you're getting that. So again, ton of accessories here that are pretty solid overall, but now we have to get into the figure. So let's start with the sculpt. The sculpt is amazing. Paint apps are incredible. Detail on the eyes is really outstanding as well, although it is a little difficult to see them behind the glasses which are reflecting the light back at me. But you can tell there's an excellent amount of work here, especially for such a small figure, because let's be honest, the figure is tiny, but it's very impressive. So now the big thing that sets these apart, the rooted hair. It's interesting. First of all, there is a ton of product here on these. I was concerned with moving the figure sculpt back and forth and, and trying to avoid grabbing the hair just to get it because I was worried I would mess it up, but it's solidly placed. There are some strands that jut out that may need either a slight trim or some additional product, but a truly great sculpt. And, and the, the rooted hair does look good. I have to give them credit for that. My only nitpick, and it's more my fear maybe, you can barely see the scar on his forehead. Granted, in the movie, the scar is hidden under the hair, but there's so much product here that it's not the easiest thing to reveal. Uh, but it's there. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the sculpt that they did. Now, as far as the rest of the figure, like I mentioned, it is a smaller figure, and I think it's very much in line with the scale we saw with the Stranger Things kids. Maybe a little smaller. Tailoring, though, is really great. The clothes, the robe, they're all very thin materials, so they do have to be handled with care, but they fall very naturally on the figure's body. And for the robe, there is a clasp at the neck that includes two buttons that do require, again, tweezers to place. Lots of great, great detail too on these clasps, and again, on the Gryffindor crest on the chest. The underlying uniform is equally well done with a great selection of material and what really feels like a great recreation of the screen used attire. The shoes are solid too, although they're fully sculpted. Um, Nothing crazy there. And the bottom of the robe is slightly wired so you can achieve some decent poses. One thing with the underlying body, as you're trying to pose, just be careful. The joints are very rigid, so you do have to apply pressure, but I would caution to proceed carefully just to avoid any breaks. But look, the figure does pose remarkably well. I did have some concerns about the wrist pegs as there were a number of posts on Facebook with people experiencing full peg breaks. You do get some spares in the box, but I didn't find that the swapping out was that difficult. In large part, I think that's because these aren't unique. This is the same exact peg system Hot Toys is using, same system Damn Toys 3.0 have used, with 3.0 using this for the their own smaller figures at this point. So if you are careful, you should be able to at least try to avoid breaks. So as we wrap up, and sorry for the longer video, but there was a lot to cover, let me start by saying I think the figure is great. It's a really solid piece with a ton of great accessories and posing options. Tailoring is top notch, the sculpt is phenomenal as well. Having said that, I expected all those things at this price point. It would have been disappointing not to have a great figure. And look, I've been collecting for a long time. 
Hot Toys, Enerbay, Damn Toys, 3-0, Blitzway, DID, Soldier Story, and, and other third-party companies. So I've seen a lot of companies come into the market, and this figure, while great, it's not the Hot Toys killer I think a lot of people were saying it would be. And at the price point, people were saying this would be the gold standard, and I don't know that it is completely. Material use, Damn Toys gives us real metal and extremely detailed components. The Damn Toys Gangster's Kingdom line too, the tailoring on those figures easily rivals what I'm seeing here. Uh, and I, I said it before, it even rivals Hot Toys. So it, this is not a knock on Inar, but just a statement that I think the figure is comparable to what these other companies are offering, at least the high-end offerings here. So my only real issue with this release is the price point. While you do get a ton of accessories, the figure is smaller and the diorama isn't some fancy material. It's plastic. I don't have a problem with it, but I do feel that it's a tad overpriced, although granted the box is huge and shipping may be a big consideration. So a great release, but not a Hot Toys killer by any means. Is it worth it? I think that depends on you. For me, while I do think it's definitely overpriced, I'll say that I'm not disappointed with it, and that I'm very happy with it, actually. Um, because I do say that about a lot of products, but at least the end product here was great. So it, I don't feel like I was cheated. And it does make me look forward to getting the rest of the figures in the line. I've already pre-ordered Ron and Hermione, and I'm really looking forward to getting the Inart Dumbledore and Snape that they teased as well. And hopefully this doesn't mark the end of the line, because I think I'm in this one for the long haul. So again, very, very good figure. Some small things I wish had been a little different, but overall, great piece. And if you are a Harry Potter fan, not a bad addition to your collection, if you can live with the price. I am very curious to see how the Cojan Works versions turn out, but I think I'm good with these in art releases. So, thanks for watching, and sorry that this video went a little long, but there was a lot to review. And if you're enjoying the content, please consider dropping a like, comment, or subscribing, and we'll touch base on the next video.